One of the questions that comes up all the time for people who are either just starting out creating videos or they're looking to take their video creation to the next level is how can I create my own graphic opener, animation, logo, sting, or video bumper to make my videos look more professional. In this video, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how you can create your own logo animation or graphic opener for your videos. And we're also gonna cover the number one mistake that most people make when they're using these animations in their videos. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything that we're talking about in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Now there are some definite advantages in using these logo animations or graphic openers in your videos. Not only does it break up the video into different sections for your viewers to help guide them through your videos and keep them more entertained and engaged in your videos, but it also helps with branding. So whether it's a personal brand that you're building or a company brand, it keeps your videos consistent and appealing for your viewers and also makes them know that they're in the right spot and watching your videos. So where then do you go to get your logo animation or your graphic opener created? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create yours and make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you the biggest mistake that people make when they're using them that really kills the watch time on their videos. Now, while you can create your logo templates from scratch using software like Adobe After Effects or Apple Motion, the learning curve on those programs is huge and you're gonna spend a heap of time learning them to be able to create something that looks pretty decent. So if you head over to videohive.net, and again, all the links to everything that I'm talking about in this video, you can find linked below. So head over to videohive.net, and if you click on the menu item for After Effects project files, and go down to logo stings, you'll see there are a heap of logo animations or logo templates that are pre-built templates for you to use and replace out the elements with your own logo and your own text to simply create these animations that are custom for you. Now I know some of you are probably thinking at this point, why did I say to go After Effects menu item instead of Apple Motion? menu item. Now there are logo stings or logo animations available on videohive.net for use in Apple Motion as well as Adobe After Effects. The reason that I'd say to go Adobe After Effects over Apple Motion is purely based on the number of templates that are available for use and for, for customization. There are way more to choose from on the After Effects side and typically, in my opinion, they look a lot better than the ones that are available just for Apple Motion. Now, if you do have Apple Motion or you'd much prefer to stick with Apple Motion, then by all means, go through the templates. I'm sure you'll be able to find something good in there. But for everybody else, I'd suggest that you stick with the After Effects templates because there are so many more to choose from. Now, as we go through some of these templates here, you can see that the average price is starting around $12 and is going up to a maximum of $20 to $30. So these aren't gonna break the bank either. Now, when you're going through and selecting your template, if you click on a template, then you can scroll down and you can see how many people have bought this template before. And you can also read any reviews or comments that have been left from other people who have bought this template. So I always like to check those out before purchasing to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the template and that it actually is easy to use and customize. The other thing to be aware of at this point is that on this same page, you can also see the video resolution or the quality of the template that you're going to be purchasing. What I would recommend is that you don't purchase a template that is less than 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. But wherever possible, if you're looking to purchase a template for the future as well, then I would suggest purchasing a template that is 4K, so a much higher resolution. You can still use it in your 1080p videos or 720p videos. You can just scale the video down. But by purchasing your template in 4K or in higher quality, then it means that at a later date when you choose to create all your videos in higher quality, your video template won't need to be replaced at that point. So remember to check out the comments for the template and the quality or the resolution of the template before you purchase. Now before you purchase, just be aware that we will be using Adobe After Effects to edit these videos. Now don't worry that earlier I said that Adobe After Effects is a huge program and it's hard to learn and hard to use. You don't need to know After Effects to be able to customize up these templates. You also don't actually need to own a copy of 
Adobe After Effects. You can get a 30 day trial version of Adobe After Effects and there's a link again in the description below to where you can download that. So 30 days will be enough for you to purchase your template to customize it up in After Effects and then save it out so you can use it in your videos from then on in. So go through and find the template that you're after, something that matches your brand and matches the type and styles of videos that you're going to be creating. Once you've found the one that you're happy with, purchase it, download it to your computer and unzip the file. Once you've downloaded your template and opened it up, you'll see that it will have either a tutorial video or a text document with step-by-step -step guides as to how to edit everything for that specific template. So you can see this one here has a video file. And it's gonna take you through adding the footage and it shows you step-by-step -step how to add your footage in, how to customize the template up. So as I said, these templates, you don't need to have any knowledge of Adobe After Effects because they'll tell you step-by-step -step how to edit them and how to customize them up. So we'll close out of that template video now. The file that you'll want to open up is the AEP file or the Adobe After Effects project file. So we'll double click on that and open it up in Adobe After Effects. And the links again are in the description to the Adobe After Effects trial version. Now, depending on which version of After Effects you've got, it's normal to have a conversion window pop up saying the project must be converted from a previous version. Just hit OK on that. It'll convert it to the version that you're using. And I'm waiting for it to load. I will turn the quality down here from full to one third, just so it runs a bit better while I'm screen recording here as well. And you can see that straight out as we swipe through this, this is our low quality version of our animation. So then it's just a matter of following through step by step the instructions for your specific template file that you've purchased in order to customize it up. All right, so the first thing to do here, as it says in the procedure, is to bring in the photos that you wanna to use to replace the blank placeholders in this template. So we'll come over here to Finder, and I've got a heap of photos here. So I'll select all of those and I'll drop them into this storage folder. Again, we're just following the procedure in the video that came with the template. So that's all that you need to do. But on the scale of things, this is probably one of the harder templates to edit because it's got photos and it's not just text, it's not just a static logo. So if you can follow through with this, then there's really no template on VideoHive that you won't be able to edit. So we've got our photos here that we're potentially going to use. We'll come up here to the edit folder and we're gonna open up photo one, double click on that. And this is where we drop now our photos that we've just brought into our storage folder in on top of that photo. So we drop it down on the bottom here. So we pick the image that we want, we drag it down to the bottom there and you can see there is our image. Now you've got to scale it up because we were creating these uh, into a magazine template We've got to get the size right. So I'm just scaling up as you would in any other software, just using the blue handles here. And we'll slide this across here. So there's photo one. Then we'll grab another photo here for number two, drag that down and scale that up. And the same for all of these placeholders that we want to fill with our photos or images. I'll drag another one down here now. Slide that across. Number four. So I'll just go ahead now and finish the rest of these and drop a photo in for each of these pages. So you can see now that even on our low quality preview here, we have the animation running through and there's photos in on every page of this animation. You can see when I let go, it creates the high quality version. That's only because I'm screen recording here and all the photos are in, but we haven't added our logo here. So the next step after adding in all our photos for this animation here is to add our logo in at the end because the last page of the book there reveals the logo. And you can see here that the length of this is only five seconds long before we're seeing our logo reveal. So you can see it goes for 12 seconds. You don't have to use the entire 
template, you can stop it and use the amount that you want. And I'd suggest that you keep your templates anywhere from five to 10 seconds on the longer end. Shorter is better. So we'll add in our logo now. So to do that, we come back up here under edit photo. We wanna edit logo, edit logo here. So we double click on this one. And we come down and click down the bottom here. And we can see this is their temporary logo or their placeholder logo. So we drop our logo in over the top of that. We've got primal video logo here. Click and drag that down above that. And our logo is now in place. So if we come back across here to the HDTV 1080p project, which is the actual project file that we started with, the main project file, then we can see that at the end of the book, then our logo is revealed. And the other thing that you can do then on that back screen is there's also a spot there for web address. You see there's another one here, web address. If we double click on that, then we can type in here, double click to edit the text. Let's go primalvideo.com. When we click off that, that's applied. We come back, we scroll across here, back to our primary project. And as we go through, you can see that the website then flashes up at the end. So that's how easy it is to customize up these templates. Now this, as I said, was one of the harder ones because we needed to replace 20 images and scale them up to the right size so that they looked good for this template. But in actual fact, for most of the templates, you won't need to do this. It will just be dropping in your logo, maybe dropping in a couple of images or changing out some text so that it suits your brand or your company. Then it's just a matter of exporting this out or saving this out as a file that you can use in your videos. So we'll come up here to File, down to Export, and we'll choose Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. We'll click on that. That'll open up Adobe Media Encoder. Now all you need to do is select where it says Output File to choose where you want to save your file to. We'll just select the desktop. You can give your file a name, primal intro, and we'll select save. And then you can choose your preset for your export. Now in most cases, the match source high bit rate will be fine. But if you'd like to customize up your export settings, then you can click on this match source here, and you can choose other file formats or other presets for exporting your video file. We'll cancel out of that now and leave that as default. The other thing you can do in here is if you don't want to export the full amount of the clip, the full 12 seconds as this went for, and then you can move these little white handles here to mark out your start or your end time. So leaving it where they are by default, you can see it's starting at the start and it's finishing at the end. If we want to shorten it here, we want to finish this at around this point, then we can drag this little arrow back and we're adjusting our end point. So you can see here that the duration of this clip now, if we were to export it out now, would be eight seconds with 21 frames. So nearly nine seconds long. So all the extra stuff at the end that we didn't need, we don't need to save out into our video file. Then we just hit OK. And to start the render, to start the, the, the saving out, we just hit the play button up here in the top corner and our export will take place. Once this file has finished exporting, you can then treat it the same as any other video file and import it and edit it in your video projects. So that's how you can create your logo animation or your graphic opener. But the biggest mistake that most people make once they've got these animations is where they actually play them back or place them in their videos. And for most people, that's at the start of the video. And that's probably the worst place in the video that you could have an animation or any sort of logo or branding. What you've got to do is hook your viewers in the first seven to 10 seconds, and a logo animation isn't going to do that. In most cases, they couldn't care less about your brand or about your animation. They want to make sure that they're in the right spot, and they want to make sure that you're not wasting their time, or they're not wasting their time watching your video. So you need to have some sort of hook at the start of your videos. 
not an introduction from you or a logo animation. It needs to be what are they gonna see in your video and why they should stick around. And then you can have your logo animation or your title animation and your brand building at that point. After you've already hooked them, after they're, they know that they're in the right spot, you can then tell them more about you and about your brand and show them your fancy animation. And then jump into the content for the video. And also it's a good idea to keep your logo animation short. I would say a maximum of 10 seconds. The attention spans on everyone these days is so short that you wanna just jump to the information as quickly as you can, or your viewers will jump ship and go and find another video that will serve a similar purpose. So make sure that your logo animation isn't the first thing at the start of all of your videos, and that there's some sort of hook or explanation to your viewers of what's gonna be in the video, then have your animation, and then onto the rest of your content. And it's also really important then to keep your logo animation short. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you click that big subscribe button if you haven't already, and check out the video linked on screen now where we show you how to create awesome animated titles for your videos. I'll see you soon.